Hey everyone, Chef Andrew here from North Coast Seafood. It's comfort food season, and today we're diving into a big pot of warm, delicious, classic fish chowder using flaky white cod, served with my ridiculously delicious and dippable cheddar chive buttermilk biscuits. This is your bonus recipe today, so be sure to drop a comment below and we'll comment back with the recipe. A simple dish of fish chowder is centuries old. Chowder, both fish and clam, has its roots in the French word chaudière, the French word for a large pot or cauldron used for cooking it. This is one of my favorite cold weather foods, and it's an easy make-ahead dish for a holiday dinner, football party, or just a chilly night in. And the leftovers only get better over time. This is not your ho-hum, run-of-the-mill pilgrim recipe that's stuck in a Plymouth Plantation time zone. This is my modern, chef-up rendition of a classic dish. It seems that everyone has an award-winning chowder. Well, here's mine, and what's mine is yours. No more time to delay. Let's go, chefs. Fish chowder ingredients are very similar to making any homemade soup. Here are the building blocks. Butter, onions, fresh leeks, fresh fennel, celery hearts, garlic cloves, a couple of fresh bay leaves, and some Yukon gold potatoes. We already know how to dice our onions. Chop our garlic, chop our celery, and presto, large one inch diced potatoes. Let me demo how to cut a fresh leek. Remove the root end, slice in half, Remove the outer layer and discard. Now cross cut into half moons. Separate the half moons into individual pieces as they stick together easily. After they're cut, be sure to rinse well under fresh running water. And now let's learn how to cut fresh fennel. Remove the stems, flatten the root side for safety and slice in half. Identify the tough core and we will V this out with a sturdy knife. Once the core is removed, we can turn it on its flat side and cut into thin slices. This has a fantastic licorice flavor that adds that uh, je ne sais quoi to your chowder. Warning, warning, warning. This video clip has been sped up. Do not attempt to cut fennel this fast. And now, the star of the show. I picked up a filet of cod. This is about a pound and a half. Feel free to use fresh or previously frozen cod. You can also use haddock, pollock, even salmon for this recipe. Whatever floats your boat. We're simply going to cut this into one inch thick chunks. I like large chunks of fish so there are large pieces in my chowder. But if you want, cut into smaller pieces. You are the master of your chowder. Cod is usually my go-to for fish chowder because it stays firm and has a mild, sweet flavor. All right, to bacon or not to bacon? That is the question. Completely up to you. This chowder will be delicious with or without it. Let's simply cut this into half inch pieces. Ah, bacon. The main reason that you are not a vegetarian. And now we're ready to cook. This will only take about a half an hour. In a soup pot that can hold about a gallon, place over medium heat and add your bacon. I like to add a touch of oil to lubricate my bacon and jumpstart the cooking. We'll cook over medium heat and allow the bacon to brown nicely into crisp tidbits. Once you have your crispy tidbits, remove them and save your rendered bacon fat in your pot. Now let's add a half a stick of butter and all of our cut veggies go into it. The onion, celery, fennel and leek. Give it a good mix and let those vegetables get to know each other. Keep this over medium heat. We do not want to brown these vegetables. We want to sweat our vegetables. And once they are sweating, add your chopped garlic and dried thyme leaves. When your veggies have softened up completely, it's time to add the flour. Adding flour to butter and fat, in this case, bacon fat, combined to create a thickening paste for your chowder. It's called a roux, R-O-U-X, 
and it's important to cook your roux for a few minutes to develop the paste and avoid a raw floury taste. Add your broth and stir in your veggies. Add your bay leaves and bring to a boil. Time to add your diced potatoes. Set to a simmer and cook until they're fork tender, but still al dente. At this point, your chowder base is done. So, 10 minutes before you wanna serve your chowder is when you should add your fish to the simmering broth. Now cook your fish slowly over medium heat, stirring carefully so as not to break up your large pieces of cod. Cook until the fish flakes apart easily, about five or six minutes, depending upon your heat. And here's the pitch. Time to bring in some heat. Add as much as you want, season with salt. And here, I'm using white pepper because it adds an extra zing of pepper. And when you're making something white, it doesn't add those black specks to your finished product. It's kind of one of those chef things. Time to add some cream for richness and to achieve that signature chowder complexion. Dairy free? Don't like cream? Leave it out. No problem. I'm using whipping cream, but easy to substitute heavy cream, light cream, half and half, even milk. Bring back to a simmer, and that's it, baby. Let's check on how our buttermilk biscuits are doing. This is a very simple recipe. No need to be a baking expert to make these. Don't forget to drop a comment below, and we'll comment back with the recipe. Life and cooking is full of famous duets. Lady Gaga and Tony Bennett, Sonny and Cher, peanut butter and chocolate. The same is true with my fish chowder and biscuits. Grab a ladle and a soup plate, and dig in for those beautiful chunks of cod and golden potatoes. Do your best chef sprinkle with those crispy bacon bits of goodness. Throw in a little hippie shake of some chopped parsley and get ready for a bowl to warm your soul. Chowderheads unite! And there you have it, my award-winning fish chowder that I've been perfecting for decades. It's a warm and wonderful dish to add to your repertoire that's sure to satisfy, and paired with my savory buttermilk biscuits, forget about it. And now, there's nothing left to do but pour the wine, light the candles, and enjoy your seafood supper. <sighs> Boom shakalaka.